Hey everyone, a lot of people died this week, including global statesman Henry Kissinger, England manager Terry Venables, billionaire investor Charlie Munger, and of course Sticky Vicky from TV's Benidorm. Quite the lineup there. I'm not sure if Terry Venables is putting together a Pearly Gates 11, but if he is, then he'll be disappointed not to land Gaza in the squad. It's probably a joke in there too about the game going to sudden death. The former Chancellor Alistair Darling also passed away this week, which raised a number of dark coloured eyebrows at Westminster. Then just as we flip to December, the death of Polk singer Shane McGowan was announced, which I heard about after a friend said, quote, Shane McGowan, Shane McGoing, Shane McGon. The coroner said it was a tough job trying to confirm his identity of their dental records, but Shane is up there now in heaven trying to track down the tooth fairy. Presumably the cause of death was that he saw a quote from a dentist and collapsed. On a more serious note, I guess, the obituaries for Henry Kissinger make for good reading, very well researched and some truly exquisite writing. No doubt because it's been sat as a file on a hard drive since the days of Windows 98 when the newspapers employed better writers and we generally had a better class of politician. You compare that to today when I can imagine Keir Starmer handing out cartons of orange juice to labour backbenchers like they were children on a school trip. In that scenario, I can imagine Diane Abbott just staring at the orange juice because it says concentrate. Personally, I think the major failing of Kissinger was more that, to balance the Soviets, he facilitated the uncontained growth of China, even long after the Iron Curtain came down. The 1990s should have seen a major pivot in US policy towards Asia that never happened, mostly due to apathy. But that's what leads us to the mess we have nowadays, where companies like Disney push woke ideas in the West, yet at the same time are happy to play along with the regressive policies when they operate in Asia. I'm sure a Disney executive would compare this policy to Kissinger's idea of real politic and pragmatism. Disney sees itself as more some kind of international defence contractor type company, which makes sense I suppose, in so much as it's produced more bombs recently than Lockheed Martin. I've not seen a Disney film at the cinema for a while, and I have no intention of changing it anytime soon. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.